Today, artist Dick Crispo will be working from the Cheryl Watts Pottery and Gallery. The gallery is located on Cannery Row, in Monterey, California. As Dick continues to work on his series of conversation paintings, we'll learn more about what motivates him in his art-making process. From the pencil drawing, to the final colors, and ink work, it's all about the rhythm. The rhythms in nature, and the rhythms from within, himself. Okay, I want to talk about what I, how I, how I lay this out with the pencil, and uh, because I use a lot of automation, the, uh, the, the, the automatic uh, uh, pencil drawing or ink drawing or whatever drawing I'm doing. But the important thing is I have my, my pencils, which are these extra heavy, uh, large jet black pencils. The, uh, from Jerry's Artorama, and uh, the paint always gets on them, as you could see. They, they have a unique, obviously they're black uh, when they start, but they're not when I'm, when I'm finished uh, or when I'm using them. It's, it's important for me to be able to draw the in a continuous motion. It is important that the arm, the hand, my brain, obviously, and my eyes are working together. One of the things that I can do is I can connect the lines together. But the important thing is to get the rhythm that's coming out of my body, out of my mind, and to be focused on where the line is going. Where the line goes tells me whether it's going to be a good composition or not. The composition depends on the original drawing first. Anything after that, is, I have to uh, correct or rearrange, may not be as, as, as fluid as the original drawing. Fluid, flowing, movement. And this way of seeing, the way of doing is the motion. So in these larger ones, the 30 by 40, I work a lot from my elbow and my shoulder. The shoulder allows me the larger forms, the mural, the mural forms that come out of the shoulder. The other part comes out of the elbow. Very little comes out of the wrist when I'm working this size. So it's this motion that's important. It's this motion that allows me to be in these hero in the heroic proportions, the larger proportions. And we can see down here one of the finished ones that has to happen with the black line too. And the black line and the pencil line may follow exact, may not follow exact, but the important thing is the fluidity, the fluid the flow and in this new setup here in the gallery downstairs I have a lot of my older works and a lot of my uh, famous works that were this was exhibited in a lot of different uh, uh, shows but it, it almost sold a few times but never did this is the lagoon at night and there's the, the fish ranch and all back there and uh, the Carmel points going that way. And this is the, uh, the lagoon at night. The landscape painting was a very important part of my teaching. And it was always, I always learned a lot from nature. Nature is the great teacher. 
we we have we can have a lot of uh, uh, studies in composition, but nobody composes better than nature does. But for me, in this series here, uh, where I'm working on the conversation, still that series is still going on. It's it's getting the rhythms and some of the rhythms that I've learned from nature, and some of that. Uh, what we talked about before is the uh, is the the, the 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 order in which things grow, the philotaxis of things, and it's in that philotaxis. If you watch a plant grow, if you watch the succulents, how they, the 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 succulents, the native plants of our area, just are just are thriving. They're just blooming like crazy because it's their time of the year. And we don't get rain, heavy rain, but we get moisture from the fog, and it's the moisture from the fog that allows them to bloom. In a sense, I want these heads that I'm doing to bloom, come out, move, and I could, I will, we can look at this other one. I get off the stool, and I will show you that we can see. Now, if you could see where the lines from one drawing to another may almost match up, be together, and it's what's happening because these are closely related in color. But I had the the, the drawing underneath may tell a different story, but they they also relate, and many times. I find my lines connecting to the, the next piece because that's part of my handwriting. My handwriting is in all this, and the handwriting is part of my philotaxis, the order in which I draw. The order in which I draw, very important. Let's look at another one, and we'll put it. And this is a, and we could see again that con, there's a connection. But we're seeing this movement that occurs, always movement, always rhythm, as in nature. Nature has a particular rhythm. I have a particular rhythm. I'm not nature's rhythm. Is nature's rhythm? My rhythm is my rhythm, and I. But I learn from nature to listen to that rhythm. Again, we'll just look at another one. And again, it's that black line that's my handwriting that we've talked about before. But that's important because it's the handwriting that goes on top of the color forms. The color forms will always change, the shapes will change, but the handwriting may stay the same. So I start. I'm starting with this pencil, and I'm ending. With the my inking brush, my this is the widest one I have for inking. It's an important combination. Start with this, end with this, and then I may go back and put some color back into the to the piece. But the drawing is goes from here to there. And then I may come down to a smaller inking to get a variety in the line. 
but most of the time I can turn this brush on its side and get that variety in the line. When I'm using the pencil, the pencil just gives me a layout type of drawing. I don't get a variety in the line unless it's unless I was doing it as a drawing and then I want the variety in line. This this is for the under under part of the painting. The underpainting and the composition. This is for the finishing the painting and finishing the smaller parts of the composition in the painting. When we're when we're working at sitting on a stool, we don't step back as much, but it's going to be important for me to uh, to have a uh, to take them out to see them at a distance. Uh, in the gallery here, we have a lot of a uh, lot of other people's works. Many of my students are in this gallery, as they are over in, that, in the gallery next door. And it's important. It's important that. Uh, that uh, it's, it's all the people that studied with landscape painting with me. It's that. I also taught abstract color and design, so it's not un, un surprising to people what I'm doing now that, take the, that took the abstract color and design class. Again, it's this, is that is telling the story. I'm telling the story first. I'm, and the story is in the shapes and the line and the rhythm is, part, is the story. And in this case, people talking to each other, but in the, and how you seeing people differently is still part of the story and how everybody is different just as they are in these paintings here. Everybody's different. Every line is has a, a difference to it. And remembering that the beginning line with the pencil and the ending line with the black ink are all coming through me in the rhythm that's coming through my by my body and my mind and my eye. <laughs> 